Good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope your Saturday has been going great, and uh, we are here as always to make it even better. So, what are we here for today? Uh, with uh, the technology and advancement in the twenty first century, everybody uh, wants to experience the best technology. I mean, that's so obvious without without having to spend too much time. And uh, people usually don't prefer exhausting their busy brains as well. So, you know, the same goes for surfing websites or mobile applications as well. You know, where the outcome is actually determined by through the efficiency and ease of use to the end user, and obviously the experience that you provide. So there are so many uh, factors involved, like usability, information architecture, interaction, etc., etc. I mean, the list just keeps on going. So don't worry, we are here to cover. the user interface uh, side of things commonly known as ui uh, with a very special guest uh, shri ram with over 13 years of experience working with one of the biggest brands uh, here in india and developing customer engagement tools for globally recognized applications shri ram uh, specializes in assisting small and medium sized businesses in scaling up through his unmatched skills and uh, you know that's not 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 just it uh he has been a fruitful mentor to many as well and uh, is here with us today to help you with the same so i think i won't take any more of your time shriram it's over to you and the audience is all yours uh thank you afif i'm i'm so happy i know to be part of uh, pro apps and uh, and no it's been kind of a very good uh, feeling and i uh, thank you so much for uh, taking to copy to be a part and then you know Uh, to start the session, and I could see a lot of uh, uh, question answers, and you know, people are sending chats, messages. You know, I, I'm I'm really excited to answer all uh, all your questions, guys. Definitely, I will do that. Okay, yeah. So maybe yeah, I don't want to waste time. So let's start the session. So at any point of time, if you feel like you want to throw any of the questions, you can definitely do it, and uh, I will answer it to you, guys. Okay, great. Okay. Okay. So let me do my screen share. Okay. So you know, uh, so you know the topic. Like, you no, know, we we are we are to know about uh, not getting started with UI design. So few people have messaged in the chat. Like, you no, know, uh, will you be explaining about UX copywriting skills and the other thing? Uh, UX UI it's a combination, and I'm I'm sure about it, and we will learn a lot. But uh, UX, I'm not going to talk about it uh, today. So mostly it'll be UI, maybe some part. Uh, if I if I come through any of the topics that I would like to explain you on UX, and definitely I'll do it. Okay. And uh, the the important thing for all your answers, like you know, uh, the target audience for this course is a very simple and straightforward. This is just for the beginners, students, and professionals who want to take up their career. in designs okay so this is very important this is not for intermediate this is not for the uh, you know the design professional no so who want to choose their career okay design careers and uh, so it, this is specifically for those people okay so why i i want to do this uh, you know uh, this session i, I was speaking with okay. and you know um, i i i am also a mentor and I I do I do teach, um, coach students about their career in designs and you know how to do a design thinking. So um, I think most of the people are from uh, college and senior messy. So so this is really for you guys. You know <clears throat> what do we learn in our college? Like let's say uh, in in a CSE or IT department or any other department that we do or engineering. See the problem is that. The subject, what do we learn? You know, it is, it is to be really open. You know, it's an outdated one. It is not a latest one. And uh, you might be thinking, like, you know, uh, at the end of the fourth year, you might not get placed, and uh, sometimes you get a feel like, you know, a uh, person who has interest in you know, coding and writing logic, they get placed, and then people like us, okay, we don't get placed. And you know, it's kind of a sad moment, like. You know, So, 
what what is going to be here for us that is the most important thing when we are doing college so most of all people know that okay there are two kind two kind of uh, department one is going to be a design a design and another one will be coding logic related to it okay and more, i don't like codes okay so, so that's the reason i love design i love to be uh, continuously doing it for so many years okay so then i decided to go with the design and then i understand then i became expert on specific topics i started as a graphic designer so from there to a uh, ux ui and then i am working with global brands okay so this is for the people who want to choose their design career okay so this is specifically for you guys so you can wait so this is about me and uh, so i i own a company which is uh, peak of india dot i am and uh, my personal portfolio is at vidishriram.com and this is me i have like you know quite a decades of years of experience in uh, industry and i work with uh, brands like you know dukar uh, mercedes uber amruta anjan uh, and the, the most uh, you know uh, known brands like you know joy alcos pvs and uh, you can see uh, you know, this is this is my uh, first agency that i work rk somi gb bro they are one of the, the biggest agency in india and these guys also like kind of one of the biggest names in the world they are from japan you know working with so many brands so many agencies you know uh, i understood that you know what we learn so many years in college it is not going to really help out because each clients will have a different experience on on building a product or building a kt to the designers you know this is going to be really different then i understood okay this is not going to be the same for everyone so we should definitely help uh, you know uh, people who want to learn design and then who want to uh, choose their design as a career so i decided to to do that in the last uh, i think like not two years last two to three years i started mentoring students and also coaching students as well like you know how do a career is important and after college okay most of the people think that you no know, uh, if i am not i'm going to place in the college then my life is going to be really in question mark they used to think like that but don't don't be like that so i have a lot of students who can uh, you know do phenomenal job the person who has like you know five years or 10 year experience you know these my guys my students they can do it in over a year i i'm seeing it to my eyes so they are really great and one one very interesting thing is that you guys are learning really fast so like you know, people like us you know we started like so many years back then step by step we used to crawl and then we learn but you no know, i'm i'm seeing students right now they are learning so fast so with all my experience i would like to you know uh, coach and mentor my guys and mentor my student and proud to proud to say that you no know, my, my students really do really well so that is my idea and that's what, that's what i want to do it as well and i and one more important thing is that i want to grow community okay so this and community have to grow a lot so that is the most important thing and uh, <clears throat> see there are totally like you know more than uh, 120 130 topics on on ux and ui okay so i i i don't think that i can able to cover up all so i'm going to take only four four topics now as of now and i'm going to make it very brief very interesting and you know uh, i hope you really will enjoy so what is the take away of this session okay that needs to be no be right so i'm going to teach you few fundamentals what is needed for ui design so once you see this if you can get to know okay this is what it is this is how we will have to consume the design once the design is consumed this is how the call to action will happen so you you will see that in the coming up slide and uh, uh, you might be seeing an app okay you, you you will say that no i like this i like that but you will have to understand the difference between it. like no why typography is uh, used in a hierarchical manner why spacing is used how spacing can really matter the most when we uh, consume things okay i'm going to explain you that and uh, uh, how a problem can you know uh, we, we get a problem and with the solution we going how we going to make a design okay so i'm going to cover up that talk, topic and the next one will be like you know how to take a better uh, decision design decision that is uh, important thing yeah 
and uh, yeah the first topic is like you know kind of very interesting this is my favorite all the time you know how to choose the right typeface so uh, guys can anyone tell me like you know uh, what is the difference between typeface and uh, font can can anyone i would like to know we like you know we know what it typeface and font okay uh is is like is like typeface and uh, fonts are same or is different yeah beautiful yeah this looks great yeah it, it's a visual cue correct but what is the difference okay so you say that uh typeface is an arial okay beautiful but let let me ask you in a different way okay so what is font then correct yeah okay so font is bold regular exactly correct yeah you are perfectly right so typeface is is like you know uh we call the name of the uh, you know this is called typeface and the styles or like you no know, regular bold thin uh, black medium you know, we we call the styles as the okay. this is very clear but most of the people get confused okay so i i am so happy that you guys really know about it okay so uh, i hope you guys know about the very very famous swiss font helvetica and you know it's it's a very popular and uh, you know the us agencies made it very popular so that's an interesting thing in that i can tell you so uh, you know you know that lot of very very big brands all of the billion dollar brands they they use this uh, like this right you can see here toyota target scotch lufthansa jeep you no know, staples these guys they they use this typeface and then do some little modification on the uh, with high kernel they used to do some modification and then they use it you know why why helvetica is like uh, so popular you know uh, when, when when someone start criticizing about uh, this typeface you right? know uh, okay when when you ask me i would say like no this is like kind of a very neutral and uh, it's like you know powerful and it's like a punch you know when when you see this typeface you get a feel like this is like kind of a completed it's like perfectly crafted you know that kind of on uh, typeface and i i am in love with it already guys these guys made it you know awesome and i'm so happy uh, to to see helvetica and i want helvetica also you know i i uh, i work with many projects using helvetica Um, yeah okay let me go to the next one so i hope you might be knowing about this futura okay and uh, you might get impressed you may not know uh, futura is used by this brand you know supreme right yeah. supreme they use used futura oh yeah you can't believe it right? see dominos they use futura paypal best buy You know, these guys are like you know uh, the giants in this industry on on their specific categories. So they use Futura. So uh, when I was telling you about Helvetica, Futura, you know they don't directly you know uh, use it. So they do make some uh, little modification, you know, and then they play with the kerning, and and then you know they, they, because they it want to be unique, right? Uh, that they don't use it directly. that is the main thing and they do some little customization and then they play with the high turning and axis and uh, column they play a lot of things are there yeah so you you might be knowing right now uh, when someone was saying like you know uh, high face is arial and font is uh, you know the bold and the variation of a style okay so exactly you're right so this is my favorite all the time okay play fair i i love this uh, serif base five uh, faces it, it, it it's like you know uh, uh, the beauty of the type faces like you no know, awesome 
like you know uh, we we use it for uh, you, you you could you can able to see it in my instagram like you know i i have used many uh, posts then by playfair and playfair is roberto and it's a beautiful combination so, and, yeah so gotham gotham is like kind of a neutral and kind of a very professional people uh, use it monster today you know with pop pens so most of these fonts are like very cyphered from, from google so you know about it and uh, so another question is coming back to me you know, i told you right how how they are uh, making some minor modifications of the typography and music so this is what they do they play with the cap height and uh, they play with the contrast contrast of the uh, each and every style sort of word that it, that they define and then you know this is how they play with it so this is the whole meaning of typography on it, it it varies from each typeface but overall when you want to know about it this is the unique thing that you want to know yeah so this is a thing that you play around to make it unique for the product yeah okay so i have asked you this already right so i have a slide here as well so you can see so this is how uh, we name it the name of the typeface copens monserrate lato and where uh, the fonts are regular medium semi bold yeah. so i hope a uh, person who doesn't know about it will learn something today and yeah so let's go to the uh, next one uh, you might be knowing right you know serif and sans serif uh, typefaces okay and but there are a lot like you know serif sans serif mono spaces script display okay so mostly we we will be uh, you know uh, using typefaces for the mobile web you know serif and sans serif so script you might be knowing like oh, you could have seen it in uh, wedding cards or any any you know calligraphy script so they might be using uh, script based typefaces and display so i have something special in the upcoming slide i'll tell you about that yeah so can someone tell me about uh, mono space do, do do anyone know about it like mono space so i i think do we have any uh, coders here okay you use okay great so mono space ah oh, great nice okay <laughs> I see that one. Yeah, you are absolutely right. Yeah, see, mono space designers mostly they don't use at all. Okay, so the person who have you know every every day to day life working with Visual Studio and uh, Terminal and Command Prompt, you know, so they might be experiencing with uh, mono space. Yeah, so I'm so happy that you really know uh, about it. Yeah, so these are the popular. Design typefaces in the industry, and uh, and and I'll tell you something with with you know decades of experience. I'm telling you, I have never used more than you know uh, I would say like eight to ten fonts. That's it. I have never used more than that. Maybe for a specific reason to create an Instagram post or to 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 convey something in a different uh, aspect or a different thought process. Okay, so I I do a different I do include a different typefaces. I give credits to the author and then I use it. But mostly I I I have never used typefaces for the live live project. I have never used it at all because then you might be asking like why are we not using it? Okay, see, um, mostly there are few things that we need to consider while using a typeface. Okay, the first thing is like legibility. the second is contrast and the third is like the information what you are trying to say it has to be conveyed in the same manner okay so let's say let's take an example like you know um, uh, i am so happy okay but the typeface is that 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 i use it's like you no know, it's like bold and uh, it's like forceful and right so it cannot convey the same meaning what i'm thinking to convey right so it has to be like a soft and the edges have to be kind of uh, rounded well shaped something like that right the same way so with all emotions and categories i would say like you know uh, maybe eight to 10 10 typefaces would really work out really well for the projects and uh, 
mostly that will work and these are like very famous in this particular having a lot of cards love comments you know we were using it picture a poppins putra lato lato is also a very beautiful uh, typeface and uh, proxima most of the people they use for creating a logo and avani uh, you know poppin flutiger yeah, basket ville yeah, it's like a, you know uh, it's a, like serif based uh, typeface so we use boroni yeah. um, designers designers use boroni the okay, boroni motto yeah so they because they want to convey they want to uh, you know uh, convey things in their style so they use because each each typeface has a different uh, expressions to convey okay so it has a lot of meaning you should definitely give a try with different typefaces to understand okay so if you are here and this is like sans serif so you might be you knowing like cambria is so a default with uh, you might be using microsoft word right so in default you can see cambria century gothic century garamond is like very you know very old and one lucira georgia right times new roman you guys know it right the, the day when you start using computer you might be using times new roman arial is like very famous and popular and uh, you might be thinking like no uh, we have a times new roman and then why do we have a playfair you might be thinking uh, this, this both are similar right so they there might be a little uh, you know uh, what is it uh, kind of updation we can say that so might be some some enhancement would have made from the base font times new roman you can compare it okay you can compare it in, in online like times new roman and uh, you know playfair it's like uh, kind of an advanced and enhanced version you can see there and yeah so you can see here right so you you think in a situation can we use these kind of a serif based uh, typefaces for a professional website like a product building website no right obviously we cannot able to do that see this is how it conveys a uh, mini and then you see here can we use these kind of uh, serif typefaces for the the mobile app maybe for a beautifying or conveying things in a different style we can use it but if you use if you pair a font if you pair a font pair a typeface sorry pair a typeface and then when you mix together and then you can start using red then it is really going to help you out but most professionals they don't use uh, this kind of you know uh, stylish things for professional product development or others okay so this is just for a reference select it for you so mostly you might be seeing right the product companies they use uh, like this like roboto lato and mon monserrate yeah so this like kind of a few references uh, added for you yeah so as uh, i just want to name him yeah i think uh, right vishnu i think so yeah so you told right uh, visual studio command prompt terminal yeah you can you can you would have seen such a typefaces yeah so maybe why they are using it okay that might be a question to you guys you know why can't we use uh, you know roboto in uh, the terminal so is it possible or not possible 100% possible you can work on it you can edit you can use different typefaces and then you can use it but these are like you know uh, pre built uh one and then uh, it, it is like you, know, you will never get bored you can you can run any uh, lines of commands and then when when it executes right you never get uh, you no know, stress over the type uh, when you consume the information there are a lot of things uh, on the type right? okay so these are the few of the yeah so let me get the yeah so this is some example by the way so you might be seeing Mono space. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> so documents and blog, blog. So you might be seeing these kind of things by in in, in the government authorized uh, places. They would, they would be using these kind of fat faces, like you no know, very old in uh, prints. Uh, the, in the person who used typewriter, you would have seen something like this. So it's kind of a very old, but it, some some typefaces are very popular and uh, like you no know, uh, reach to the larger extent. 
Okay, and the script based. Uh, so you can see it here. I, as I told you, right? Not in all the places that we can able to use these kind of script interfaces. Like, you know, we are using in a wedding card or some, uh, some place that we want to highlight uh, in a very limited space, we may be using these kind of type verses. And, and as I told you, right, my, my favorite, my favorite play fair. So, okay, now, now I'm going to ask you another question. Okay. What is meant by display calls and then why it is like so famous? Why, uh, you know, uh, Roboto or Von uh, Serete is not a display case and why play fair is a display? Can, can anyone uh, answer it? I would like to know about it. Why do we call a specific typefaces for display, play fair, display, uh, specific display? Any, any, any thoughts here? All right. yeah, it's, it's simple, right? You, you can understand display, right? Display is meant for the devices with a larger displays. When, when you see, uh, you know, in the prints, or the display which has larger meaning, right? Exactly correct. Easier to grab attention. Perfectly correct. Yeah. So I'm going to share another slide, which is going to be the answer for that. Yeah. So when you want to consume things, okay, like a, it should be a strong punch. Okay. We, we want to really nail it. Okay. Those places we can definitely use a display. Exactly correct. See here, the hero sections of the the landing page that we use. Uh, no, the very, very, you know, bold, very uh, you know, big uh, size uh, typefaces because we want to create a point. We don't want to write a paragraph. We want to create multiple headings which conveys in this way, right? That is really not going to help us. Yeah. So that kind of a punch we can able to use using a different uh, uh, typefaces, which has capability of display typefaces. We can use it. So my favorite is Playfair. So I have used it. So let's continue on the uh, thing. So the few uh, things you know you need to consider before choosing a typeface. First thing is like no, uh, um, you should you should start seeing uh, what how others have done a design. Okay, you should you can take a lot of inspiration. That is really important. Okay, and and uh, the most important thing when you want to choose typeface, be very very clear. Okay, you're gonna use it. To create an uh, you know, word mark, or uh, is it going? Is, is it for a logo, or is it for a monogram, or is it for a uh, no a reading purpose, or is it for something? You should be very very clear what you are going to do it. Okay, so if you are not clear, no, no worries. It takes references, then 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 uh, you know, uh, in bands, Ripple, you know, a lot of people have done uh, uh, you know uh, using such amazing typefaces. They have done an amazing work. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm so happy to be part of this community with my thoughts and things and sharing with you. You know, we can definitely get inspired with uh, those works, and then you know we can decide. Okay, this is really going to work for me or not. And most important thing is that you should be sure what kind of uh, industry that you're going to work. Okay, you're going to work in healthcare, so you, uh, serif or uh, you know uh, script based. Typefaces will never work for healthcare, so you should be you should be very clear before using them. And one more thing is that is it going to be on a print uh, printed mode? Because uh, you can see few brands, right? Uh, you, you you can see like you know a lot of people are distributing flyers in the, in the industry and you know, on a specific places and where you walk. You can see right. So display counts is very important. So we will have to structure it. You will have to vision and try to understand how you want to position your brand or how you want to position your work. That is very important. Okay. And last final thing is like, you know, uh, whenever you see a typeface, it, it should have some you know, a message to convey. It should have some meaning to convey. So it, it shouldn't be like, you know, uh, it, it shouldn't be just a typeface. You should never take that way. Okay? That is very important. And contrast, contrast is very, very important when you select a typeface. So these are the few points that I would like to tell you. Yeah. And you know, this is my favorite and it's kind of a very secret, not everyone uh, you know, in the industry, they know about it. 
you can you can you can see that you know most of uh, the best websites or creatives you know, it, it is uploaded here okay you can see what is the typeface that they are using and you know you can able to visualize okay this is really going to like this my project or my client's project you can you can find a lot of inspiration from this okay, fonts and use so i'm sharing this with you guys okay so and uh, the next topic you know uh, spacing and uh, grouping so uh, you you might be thinking right you know uh, how spacing and grouping is important for the you know, ui ui stuff okay? right so i'll i'll show you a meme let me know what you guys think okay yeah. so share your comments so i would like to know your uh, thoughts as well how do someone can read this <laughs> yeah exactly correct right exactly correct yeah this is really insane right see here cover your form in the <laughs> right exactly correct yeah okay let me go to uh, next slide okay yeah see here just uh, click away okay and mega flex no this is insane right how now you can understand why why spacing is so you know, uh, very important for uh, uh, you know the information that you want to consume it's very very important right the last one so yeah <laughs> see massage yeah seriously yeah see guys the, i have been created such things okay this is already available in google you can search it out i i did not touch anything i just you know, took some uh, downloaded some images and then in... <laughs> yeah exactly yeah see here kids for exam seriously we can't able to read it right yeah so this is what we we going to talk about so why is spacing is really an important thing in ui so um no i i can i can show you few example that you can able to understand right yeah so when we want to group things the the meaning is conveyed in a different way but if we separate it or you know we combine it without uh, you know the proper spacing it is going to really blow away the whole thing and then the meaning will completely lost right? that is very important thing so guys remember spacing is a very important thing when we want to consider and you know uh, most of all all beginners when they when they start learning ui you know uh, i i i teach them i i you know i insist them to the word keep the word to remember again and again i think consistency 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 you keep on telling them like, you know consistency is the most important thing that that, that will be applied throughout the mobile app throughout the web or any design because consistency makes you feel like okay this is this is mine okay this is how i will have to consume the information okay, consistency is very important so when we when we start uh, you know uh, start working on any projects you know, we we create a styles we create a color palette we create spacing okay we create spacing and then we do so spacing is going to be really important that is going to be really like you know uh, grouping information how our target audience wants to consume how we want our target audience to consume the information there are two different things okay how we want uh, them to consume how they can consume the information what we do okay so this has to be addressed properly before we do so this is what yeah and uh, the most you know uh, And a common mistake made by the beginners and intermediate people is you know, uh, they feel that you know I I'm doing this job I'm going to complete it that's it it's going to be over no we will have to you know wear a hat we will have to wear a different hat try to understand this is what my target audience is going to consume it okay that is very very important 
you you might be thinking like you know uh, what if i i move this uh, a component in a different spacing as in going to be really matter it yes it will really matter a lot okay because when someone want to uh, read a paragraph okay so let's say i'm going to read it this way okay the heading and there is a a 16 pixel of uh, spacing i'm going to breathe it and then i'm going to read it okay see when you read a paragraph you you notice again okay once again you you try to notice it in a very in manner when you read it you take a breath okay and then till you hold the breath you read it and then you get relax and then you read so this is actually kind of a harmony that we we want our target audience or the person want to consume this information who read it so what if we create a paragraph without spacing so do you think that you can hold the breath for like 2 3 minutes to read the full information no you will get like you know crazy oh my god what kind of information he want to convey i am not going to read it no you will never read it so spacing will make you know you feel like you know uh, if you can consume information in a very proper way and then some call to action will happen let's say you, there will be a button sometime or there will be a information to so land in a different page that you want to convey a so, lot of things are there so spacing is very important thing okay so that i want to highlight and uh, readability so see so can you able to read this information in a very peaceful manner obviously no you cannot able to read it it's like you know it is like very hard right hard to read such a thing what if we arrange it in a proper way okay we are we are kind of relaxed we're going to read it you know enjoy reading it so this is how we should do ui ui designers are like you know the most important uh, you know uh, important team in the product development okay so they hold all the powers they they if they visualize things in a wrong manner right then your target audience is going to be really upset they cannot consume information in a proper way okay so that is a point i want to can make things in space i hope you so you can visualize better about spacing okay. see the third uh heading is like you no know, choosing colors so again you, know, you you might be knowing this sometime but okay so so can anyone tell me like colors do colors have a feeling of conveying things or colors is like you know uh, you know it's it's just color So why do we want to convey things? It, it's not going to be like you know, uh, it's just the colors. Why, why, why are we going to give a lot of importance? Can can anyone tell me like, yeah, oh, yeah, obviously, color color you know, conveys the messages. Okay. So my question is, is it really affects the mood? Exactly. Yeah. I think uh, Raven have a good sync with me. I think so. Yeah. So exactly correct, Raven. so guys i i am expecting some more answers from you so do colors uh, have a feeling feelings to convey emotions right sneha good you are exactly right yeah emotion right yeah so when you look at this uh, you know uh, the colors so you can able to see it in the layers right so you have track style of uh, you know art pieces as colors and then you know you, you get to feel something so you look looking at this color so it, it is a like very important right choosing colors yeah. so what if what if the colors are placed in this way yeah. right you, you you cannot say it is this way right it is going to be really uh, you know not correct so colors has to be you know uh, according to me it has a feeling okay it has a lot of emotions to convey and uh, you know yes yeah. i i i have some few suggestions you know when when you guys choose in colors for your projects okay you can you can learn a lot from there okay so yeah so colors impact obviously as as you guys stated here like you no know, it impact it impacts the mood it uh, it has emotions it has a lot of creativeness it has a feeling because this is how you you have seen things 
around around you like let's say when you are driving the car you can see uh, uh, red green and yellow it, it it gives you an attention like no i will have to stop it somewhere okay so i need to have a no patient and then have a look so uh, when you see orange it, it has a lot of energy you can see a orange fruit you know a lot of energy you feel happy about it so there are a lot of uh, things it colors and you know emotions are connected okay so we should be you know uh, what to say we should be very patient define colors for the project that is very important and uh, i personally would suggest like you know don't use more than two to three colors in the project because see you can use obviously don't consider black white all the colors okay that are like kind of a neutral gray black and we can use it for uh, the projects but the mostly colors like you no know, red green blue orange you know, some kind of an uh, family of colors you will have to precisely found find for the project and then you will have to use it that is very important okay Yeah. So uh, there are these are something like you know uh, you would have seen it in other coolers or uh, coolers dot co the other places. So these are like technical terms. You know uh, when we define colors, we can define colors in places of monochromatic or a complementary. I personally like to use complementary colors because that creates lot of attention, and then my project gets more ident you know visibility and identifications. Right? So I like to use. Mostly a complementary colors for my project. So, and you know, uh, this, this this is done by one of my students. Okay, so he have done this initially, and then uh, I spoke with him. You know, after the uh, the whole one one and a half month of uh, uh, internship, so I asked him, so do you want to still stick with this? So what he was like, no, I I, I want to completely uh, transform it to a different way. Okay, so uh, this is his project. I personally want to share this with you guys. Okay, so he thought before, you know, he see me, uh, what he see things in online, and then try to make things. And this is the beautiful thing, through his knowledge. Okay, so when he sit me, I I try to feed him with lot of inspiration and my thought process, and then you know, with his own experience, thought process, and his ideas, he has done this. You know, this uh, right. See. How colors can play a important role. He has used very mildly, and he want to be sure. You no, know, this side has to be a a complete creative base side. So that is his. Uh, and you know, so few my favorite side. I would like to give it to you guys. You can try it out. You can land in brand colors. What net you can find the the biggest brands in the world. The colors. What do they use? The primary, secondary, and tertiary colors that they use. You can find it in uh, this. Website, okay. It's a brand colors dot net, and this is my favorite all the time. You know, I whenever I want to start a new project, I I just you know land in this site. You know, it, it has an automatic scrolling. It's a beautiful thing. You know, I just um, sit back and relax. Okay, so what is the color that I'm going to pick for my uh, project? So I can search it from there. So I would like to share this with you. Colors dot co, and uh, my favorite. So when you choose colors, you can try it out on the interfaces how it will look as a final product for the mobile app or a web. So you can uh, try it out with uh, colors. Okay. So this is my favorite that I have found uh, quite some time, and then I played with a lot of uh, projects, and then it's really working out well. Yeah, and you know, guys, right? Although cooler before it was like cooler, now it is like color. so you can you can see a lot of uh, features that they have like you know uh, gradients or contrast so they have a lot of uh, thing and also they have a meaning with colors and uh, palette creations they have so i mostly use colors.com i feel like it's very comfortable and uh, i have well, i because i use figma i have a plugin for colors so it's like kind of a very good combo for me to use yeah And yeah, so colors is done. Okay, this is the last heading that we are on this session. Okay, so after you know knowing like few topics, you might be thinking like, okay, so I could see a lot of things around me with uh, you know so many colors, 
shapes, typefaces, inspiration a lot, right? So according to me, I I I I do design things in a different way. Okay. So I I do not want to uh, follow the same what other designers are doing in this industry. Okay, I I would like to uh, take things from the real life that I that I walk, that I travel, that I write. You know, I I see things in a different way. So that is my uh, you know the on the environment. Yeah. So I would like to highlight few things that how I visualize and how things are presented. Okay. So I, I hope you would have seen something like this, right? It's a very olden uh, kind of a you know, tape recorder or a amplifier. You can you can see it, right? The buttons, okay? So you know, people, designers like us, okay? designers like you, got lots of inspiration from these kind of a real world, you know, uh, components, okay? And they are converting this into this thing. You can see here, right? So this is how it has been converted. See? So people like us have done this in a new job. So it's like a great feeling, right? So getting inspiration, inspiration from real life components and then we are implementing it on design. So when, when someone starts using it, right? They get a feel that, oh my God, I have used this somewhere. So it's, it's a great thing that I want to use it for my, you know, project, they will definitely think something like this. And then you see the recycle thing. So this is how the inspirations were transformed into, uh, you know, designs. And then you see the daily uh, thing that you see, the rectangle shape, the square shape, the triangle, the hexagon, circle, uh, oval, you know? See, this is how you see it, right? So these are the shapes it's been converted. Converted into real shapes and then people started using it and then it conveys a different meaning as well. So, you know, so speaking about this pyramid, that's a whole, whole big story, right? We cannot able to even imagine it. So we can say this is a sun and you know, it has a lot of meaning, the honeycomb, so hexagon. So yeah, a lot of things are uh, derived from the live uh, environment. So we, we we should get inspiration from them, and then we'll have to do it. Okay. And then you see, you're seeing this uh, every every day, like you know, uh, the files. So this is how it's been transformed. Yeah. So so this this is guys. Yeah. So here we are on the. Uh, the final slide. So let's get inspired by our surrounding and environment we learn and, and learn a lot. Still, we will have to learn a lot, you know, to make our identity better in this industry. So thank you so much, guys. Okay. And, and I'm so happy that you guys with me throughout this uh, session. And then I hope we really liked it. And then I you know I, I made you to learn something today. Yeah. So thank you so much, guys. Perfect. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Shriram, for sharing such valuable uh, things with everyone today. I hope uh, everyone uh, had a great time. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have got quite a few questions that we can cover up. And uh, if you have any questions, I think this is the best time to go about it now. So yeah, I think we can, uh, we can just uh, stop sharing a screen and uh, take up the questions. So the first one I, I got like you know best software in UI XT or Figma. Okay, so I think I'm I'm answering this uh, question like more more than hundred times I would say. Okay, see, uh, I think you know about it, right? Figma and XT. Um, yeah. Figma is like you know uh, kind of a game changer in this industry. You know, I I cannot complain about XT. XT is also the same, but. Uh, Figma has grown so much, grown so much, like, you know, uh, uh, they have a beautiful community, a lot of, you know, like-minded people to share things. And, and when, when there is a problem, they have a solution in terms of like plugins to build on and a lot. Right? Okay. 
so uh, initially xd was like you know uh, not there for uh, uh, both the operating system okay and it was uh, when you, when, you, when you see sketch right sketch it was there only for uh, mac and then it was not for windows and then you know xd and figma uh, so they they gather a whole uh, you know bunch of uh, pg and then you know people started using it and then i personally suggest to use uh, figma and you know you see i you, you don't take it this way you try to you know uh, what to say uh, play with some some kind of apps you try to creating few designs so you you get a feel what is the tool i get a better user experience okay so you can decide that but my suggestion is figma so so that is the answer for the questions yeah perfect uh, i think before we uh, move on to the next questions uh, maybe i can uh, go go on and ask one because yeah. uh, i think uh, this is a very common question i mean everyone yeah. speaks about ux versus ui and things like that but uh, i think uh, what really matters is uh, does a ui designer really need to be uh, an expert with ux as well or does it Uh, or is is there a case where anyone who doesn't know a lot about ux can be a ui designer as well uh okay let me ask you this way uh, that, that is a famous saying like right? no chicken comes first or egg comes first what do you answer <laughs> yeah i mean that that pretty much uh, right. answers yeah. the question yeah exactly that's the same thing see ux ui it's like combination okay ux it's like you no know, you cannot able to see it you can just feel it so let me let, let me give you an example like you know um, I, i want to design a mobile app for my healthcare industry okay and i have a few patients and then uh, if i want to do a design for healthcare and my patient and the doctors i should start wearing hat like you no know, i will have to be a doctor only then i know what are the user experience my patient wants and the same things apply for patient as well right so uh, we will have to understand discuss with them and you know uh, do some interviews like you and ux interview then you will have to understand the whole problem statement so ui you know is like execution mode where ux is like understanding the problem so now you tell me like you know uh, who can be ux in ui it has to be both right but uh, as another important thing that i want to highlight here is like you know ux is like you know ocean it it cannot be covered immediately but according to me you should have some knowledge let's say when clients provide uh, yeah, yeah, some documents like you know ux document ux interview document from the company or some product you should able to consume the information how the uh, the client have done interview with the people okay so if you cannot able to understand then how can you make a beautiful design or you know uh, a solution to a problem it 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 will not work out at all right okay so uh, when, when you see companies like you know uh, dobi tesla and a lot of uh, uh, big company they have a specific and separate designation for ux alone you would have seen it like you know ux uh, uh, tester ux uh, uh, expert you you can see a lot of designation specifically but not every company you know can can have that so that is the reason they have a combination of both ux and ui but uh, i would say like you should have a knowledge to you know uh, give a solution to the problem that is how we should understand and then experience it yeah so i would say that yeah i think that makes a lot of sense so yeah i mean uh, taking up the next questions that we have uh, what design approach uh, shall we take while uh, designing as beginners mm -hmm. yeah so this is kind of a very you know vague uh, i'm not exactly. sure how to answer it but still i i can tell you that i i understand your uh, your mindset yeah see design approach is like you know uh, don't get into design okay so you start learning about typography spacing contrast uh, you know a lot you should you should completely you know learn the whole topics related to ui okay once once you are very strong in uh, ui then you can try it out you know you will have to implement a wireframe low fidelity high fidelity try prototyping start experiencing the uh, design then you can you can shift it okay so there is no something like something like basic if, if you know the whole structure then you can do anything that you want yeah 
you can introduce your own style as well that is also possible in uh, the basic yeah. uh okay so venkatesh ask uh, yeah. asks that uh, do we really need to follow ios and material design guidelines every time to design a ui yeah this is really a beautiful question and i was thinking like someone can ask ask me such a question yeah nice venkatesh so venkatesh i'll i'll clarify it again see uh, you know there are two giant this in this industry ios you know android and when you compare it look billion people are using the android and uh, no uh, still billion devices are there in ios as well so um, they have a different you know what to say they have a different set of guidelines to be follow okay you can uh, you can try it out so let's say if you have a clarity okay my product is going to be uh, you know it is only for ios obviously you can use a design guideline from apple okay so human interface guideline actually Okay. so you can directly follow it uh, if you are not sure about it you know my app can be for both then you will have to do a combination of both uh, uh, design guidelines so once you become an expert like you know, at least like 2 3 years of experience you will know how you can able to make a design for the product so that will be interesting but yes if you have a clarity on your product and how and where it is going to be published you can definitely use the guideline from the Uh, Android or Apple, you can definitely use it. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Navneet has uh, a couple of questions mixed into one, um, and the first one is pretty vague again. So uh, he asks that how a beginner can break into UI uh, and UX design jobs. Uh, okay. I am personally more interested in UX research. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, as yes, I have made this design in Figma. So that is the last thing I just want to answer. Okay, let me clarify it again. See, uh, UX is a different, you know, vast and uh, like kind of an ocean. You you cannot conclude something. You can gather data when you have experience. Okay. So if you are, you know, you should be very clear. Okay, am I getting into UX or UI? So beginners level, you know, I would say like. If you if you balance both UX and UI, definitely you will get job because see uh, Google will never hire you without experience, right? I mean, uh, even even when a few of my friends spoke with me, like you know, uh, CMD, I I I I have few of my friends from MIT and uh, and University. They get hired by Google. Why not? You know how? how why not? I I'm not getting hired by these people, like right? you know. See the process is very different. Okay, don't get confused. No, uh, like out of hundred, it's going to be one. Okay, that is going to be what for one. So, uh, as for you know, my thoughts, I would tell you that you no, know, you try to learn both. You know, you some point at time you will know that I will have to travel in this way. From there, you decide. Till then, don't decide on anything. You learn both the thing and then start working on it. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh. All right. So, uh, Raywant uh, asks that uh, how do you take harsh feedbacks on your design from key stakeholders? How do you cope up with that? Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I, I I'm not sure, guys. How you know? You know how you people are thinking this way? So these are the exactly thing, exact you know uh, problem that we face. So design is okay. But I'll tell you some secret how to handle this. See, when you are an expert, when you design things. that matches your target audience mindset and how they want to consume the information and if you have the data like you know usability report testing report you know so you can you can try to beta uh, releases and then you have a lot of information right so if if your client is asking harsh you know feedback based on the design if you have a valid answer or valid information definitely stakeholders will never ask you i'll tell you something i work with uh, you know uh, uh, apple okay so not directly with apple i work with uh, agencies who were working with apple and uh, you know very uh, i cannot reveal that name and the people so um, when when i'm working with them it's really hard for me to you know take up all this feedback and converting into the it's really hard but obviously once you start uh you know uh, getting an experience working with multiple products you, you get a feel okay when we design something we shouldn't able to present this way 
we going to have it for some time share it with with our close uh, you know community or uh, people for a feedback if you have you know a reason then that's it if you going to love it see end of the day you have to think see the design what you do it is not uh, going to be used only for you it's for your target audience okay if you could not able to design a product for your target audience definitely people going to question you right so yeah i hope uh, no i have uh, answered your question right so uh, what's your view on the paytm ui is in it breaking the material design guidelines right yeah it's is they are definitely doing it that's what i told you right so they have uh, the same user experience for both android and ios right so they have similar kind of thing so obviously they will have to break it that's the reason i told you once you start using the design guidelines right you will come to know where to break it and uh, if we break it it's going to be really you know uh, what to say i can able to balance it that's kind of a user experience you can build on when you work on uh, basic guidelines and uh, previously with uh, adobe xd material design have given a provisions like you can customize your own guidelines for uh, creating a component you can do it but recently they have removed it and not sure about it you can control the whole thing so maybe if they if they bring the same feature again material design for uh, the recent release that will really uh, solve this so everyone will have a unique design for their app so uh, navneet has a follow up question uh, to the one that he asked earlier uh, for an entry level ui ux job what are the skills that you think are necessary uh, the first thing is like you know uh, don't be a designer okay don't be a designer at all you you come you, you try to think like a designer okay? you should have a design thinking knowledge that's it nothing else when when i hire uh, you know uh, uh, candidates hr agencies or the others no i i take like you know uh, three to five questions and then i try to understand how the people are thinking about it if they really make me feel like happy right okay these guys are really going to be with me for so many years so i'm going to appoint them and then i i teach them so the basic criteria that i can say that you no know, start using tools the like figma is like you know game changer in the whole industry thing is so previously like you know uh, uh, i would say like 2015 you know i used to design mobile screens in photoshop you think of a situation like 100 or 200 screens you know i i should open one screen at a time make changes gonna update it and then i'm going to find another screen you know it will be in a somewhere folder the naming convention lot of things matter right it is going to take a lot to design like you know uh, 15 20 screen we used to take like you know one week time frame to do that but right now you see you can have like uh, 50 100 screens open in a figma you can work here and there you can work and then it's going to be like the like components variants it, it is like magic right they have created it's like amazing amazing thing so what i'm trying to say try to learn tools uh, Uh, you you should be very strong in fundamentals okay fundamentals the most important thing that you will learn so go with the industry practice okay and then add your creativity okay so you will be definitely unique and uh, you know uh, the most important question you can be in like you know, three to five years you can you can do that yeah so uh, you mentioned photoshop and uh, prachi has yeah. a similar question to that that is only uh figma enough to achieve all your goals or uh, knowing or do be so it is also needed uh, let's say okay uh, before the, the previous question i told you right now <clears throat> you should know the basic fundamentals very uh, you know start using the tools and then creativity so to create some designs like you know very unique designs figma is not not going to really help you this is a ui tool okay ui and ux tool and uh, photoshop is going to be the uh, <clears throat> replacing that creativity part so when you want to work with uh, images play with uh, you know uh, colors uh, creative thoughts into it figma is not a tool for you guys figma can work only on the ux and ui and where photoshop you can be able to create image based editing works so you can do that creative work so definitely that is going to be really so we use we use like adobe products like you know so we illustrator photoshop premiere 
uh, we use author, we use uh, edge animate, we use uh, audition, we use After Effects. No, it depends upon the need that we use and then we execute. We have a license, we have agency license, we, we use it for the project. But mostly after Photoshop, Figma is our uh, main main tool that we use. Yeah. All right. So uh, similarly, like uh, this is also very commonly asked that uh, how about uh, knowledge and coding like mm -hmm. HTML, CSS, do you need some knowledge and data that as well? For reason, no, 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 100% it is not needed. I have mentioned very clearly, like, you know, uh, coding is very different and uh, design is very different. In design, we have a segment UX and UX. And uh, if, you, if you have a good knowledge in logical thinking, then UI is going to be really game changer thing for you. You can learn things pretty fast because when you want to shift from one screen to another screen, it shouldn't distract the audience or it should not distract the user to get a feel that, okay, what I'm going to on this screen, what I'm going to on the another screen. So without distraction, if you think on a logical perspective, you can, you can do it. So if you have a logical thing in that is going to be really added values while creating things in UI. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. So uh, let's take one last question uh, by Sneha that, uh, how do we make sure to include accessibility in our designs? If you follow the basic guidelines and uh, visuals, definitely that's going to really uh, help you out. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, all right. I think, uh, okay. I mean, there are a couple of more questions. So, let's take those up if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, I mean, this is one that you have already mentioned. Which UI uh, tool do you think is better, Adobe XD or Figma? Which one do you prefer? I prefer Figma. Figma is really good. Yeah. yeah so uh what screen size should we use before designing it shall it uh, should it be minimum or maximum no you know there is no uh, no preference like that if you have uh, I know, uh, uh, if you know if you're working in a mobile project go for a mobile direct uh, specification size even using because in figma there's a default uh, sizes are available you can let be use it if you are doing things in web Obviously, they have a size like 14 inch, 16 inch standard size. You can use it directly. If there is no uh, specific thing that you would do, but they have option in Figma. Like once you do a design, they have an export option like 1x, 2x, 3x. No, they have a lot of x, so you can use it, export it for larger screens. But you no need to be worried about if you do things in Figma, mm -hmm. and developer can able to adapt it for the, you know, the larger screen sizes. Yeah, they can even. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's about it for the questions. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Sriram, again. I mean, uh, this was really helpful to anyone who would really like to know, you know, uh, what is UI and how can someone get started. So I hope everyone who joined today uh, got to know that. And uh, I mean, thanks a lot for joining in, everyone. I know that Saturday isn't the best time yeah. for everyone to uh, join, <laughs> especially uh, uh, an evening here in India. But thanks anyway. Uh, we would be uh, back again next Saturday for another workshop. But uh, again, I mean, coming back to what Sri Ram had to share. Uh, thanks a lot, Sri Ram. It was a great pleasure to have you here, and I hope to uh, have you many more times and you know help everyone to kickstart their career and uh, excel accordingly. So, yeah. Uh, cheers, everyone. Have a great weekend ahead, and. Uh, yeah, you can follow Sri Ram on his uh, Instagram, his LinkedIn. And uh, if there were any questions that you had and were left out, feel free to reach out to us and uh, Sri Ram will be more than happy to answer those for you as well. So yeah, uh, thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great weekend ahead and uh, have a great, great day or night. Yeah, thank you guys. See you then. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, we'll definitely catch up again soon in the next uh, session. Perfect. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.